We can try a hook. There's our hook. Oh, Chris, I wouldn't call that a hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Vander Holyfield. <laughs> Welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And a really big engineering challenge today uh, for engineers who aren't familiar with artificial intelligence and what's going on in that neck of the woods um, is just getting started, basically. Um, you need to know, um, you know, a data scientist is usually involved in AI development uh, models and uh, algorithms, and then you've, you know, got to implement that a lot of times on a target embedded device. And in order to sort of wade through this nebulous new uh, world, uh, we've brought on Chris Rogers, who is the founder and CEO of Sensimal. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks, Brian. Very good. Um, so what do you say, Chris? Uh, what's the biggest pain point? Um, you know, I, everybody's boss today, just a few years ago, everybody's boss was saying, what's our IoT strategy? We've got to do something around IoT right now. Um, and now everybody's boss is saying, what's our AI strategy? You know, you've got to do something around AI right now or we're going to fall behind. Um, what is the biggest pain point you hear um, from your customers and just engineers around the industry um, in that regard? really trying to democratize the process of building intelligence for sensing into the IoT device. You know, if, if you're a you know, big company building a high volume uh, device like Amazon's Echo, right, uh, you've got a large team that can do the kind of work that requires data science and requires MATLAB and, you know, conversion of theoretical algorithms into something that can be implemented on a device efficiently. Uh, what we've done is we've taken, uh, you know, the uh, you know, aspects of AI and machine learning and, and use that to automate the process of building the algorithms themselves. So it's, it's, uh, you know, some people call this auto ML, uh, it, it, but it's really the application of machine learning to the development process of building the algorithms themselves right. and automating that, that, that process of building the code. Let's dive right into uh, Sensible's uh, analytics studio. What's going on in here? Okay, great. Um, so what I want to show you is the Analytics Studio, which is the core engine within the Analytics Toolkit. What this does is provides two interfaces for two user types. Uh, what I'm showing you now is uh, the, the simplified uh, GUI style interface where I can set constraints for my model and then have the tool go through the process of selecting most of the details. Uh, for a power user who's familiar with Python, as most uh, data scientists are, uh, you could also choose to interact with the tool in a command line environment using uh, Python programming language in uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, but for, for the most of us, you know, we'll stick to this interface here, which uh, takes you through uh, you know, sort of a, uh, a standardized workflow of first specifying what data set we want to use as the input into the, the uh, model generation part of the process. So in this case, we're gonna work with this gesture recognition uh, demo. Mm -hmm. and I'll select that as my project. Uh, and then uh, I can specify one of a number of different pipelines because I might wanna try a lot of different variants. So I would define this and then go in and in successive steps here. Uh, the first thing I would do is to take uh, you know, the superset of data that I have collected and labeled for that particular application and then uh, define a subset of that data that I want to use for building a model. So I might have a, a, a huge amount of data and I want to create a model for some specific set of uh, circumstances or context. Or, so I can set filters and create a query and say, uh, this is what I want to use specifically for this particular model. So in, in this case, I can see from this histogram here uh, that uh, here we have five different uh, uh, hand gestures that we're uh, identifying, uh, a letter A, a D, an L, an M, and a U, and how many instances of labeled data I have available for each of those. Uh, so if I'm satisfied that, uh, yes, I've captured all the data that I thought I had, then I would then move to the next step, which is the actual model building. So uh, as you can see, it, this is a greatly simplified interface. I don't have to go in here and know a great deal about different types of classifiers or support vector machines or random forests or 
decision trees. Instead, the tool figures out which of those types of models works best for me. Uh, instead, what I do is I go in and I say, what data set am I going to use from uh, what I just defined above? Mm -hmm. Here, we're using the power of the toolkit to search through a variety of different classifiers, as well as to do the feature extraction phase to take all sensor data and transform that into uh, an input feature vector that's used for classification. You set up the parameters for building a model. Mm -hmm. They'll start with you know, very basic parameters, like how accurate do I want the model to be? How big can the classifier be and still fit within the memory that I'm allocating for this? Okay, that's uh, great. And then there are more advanced settings uh, that uh, control you know, how is the uh, cross-validation taking place? Basically, how is the, the model testing uh, that uh, it generalizes and isn't overfitting? And then the advanced tab gives you yet further settings, most of which uh, you know, the default values will work well. Uh, it's only if uh, you, know, you need to go in and tweak the model where you would you know, go to these tabs. But primarily it's one of defining uh, what data sets you want to use, how you're going to segment your data. And then, and then from that point, then uh, the, the tool runs an automated batch job that could take minutes. It could take uh, several, depending on how much data you have, right? Uh, by contrast, if you'd put this in the hands of a data scientist, it could take them months. Right. Uh, so... Well, it may seem like a lot that this job takes an hour or so to run. Uh, you know, you compare that to the way things used to be done. It's a huge time accelerator. So real quick, Chris, uh, before we keep going, um, you mentioned features and classifiers that are integrated into the toolkit here. Um, how many are supported at this point? Yeah, good question. So we have over 80 features uh, that range from a simple you know, uh, you know, down sampling or averaging or zero crossing rates up to uh, much more sophisticated like an FFT, mm -hmm. or an MFCC type algorithm. And uh, the brute force approach would be to let the tool, you know, simply traverse every possible feature that's, that's in, the, in the library. Uh, the faster answer can be in the case where you have some intuition of what types of features would work for your particular application type. If it's frequency data, if it's audio data, you might pick FFT or MFCC, which would fall under these advanced features. So there's the ability here under pipeline settings to give the tool a bit of a hint of you know, where to start its search process. At the point that you've got the model, what you'll see is that this table is populated with what it believes are the five best uh, models for your data set. Mm -hmm. And those become the basis for all the subsequent steps where uh, I can then take one of those five models and then explore it in some detail, right? From this drop down, I see that I have the, the five uh, models that it chose and I can select any one of those. And then I can look at things like the confusion matrix to see, uh, you know, what the results versus actual, the predicted versus actual results are. Wow. I can look at what type of model did it choose. Uh, you can pick this tab and see specifically what features are being used to transform the raw data into uh, the input feature vector used for classification. So then at the point that you've generated a model, you've explored the results, uh, and you're comfortable that the results are acceptable for what you're trying to build, then the next step is the one where you know, the, the handoff takes place between the data scientists and the firmware engineer, typically. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the data scientists will come up with a, a, a wonderful model that works in MATLAB, uh, but then they have to do all the realities of, you know, what does it need floating point? Is it going to fit within the memory I have? But with this tool, we've already uh, built the models with a uh, target uh, uh, model size in mind, and it's a matter now of generating the embedded code so we move to the next stage here, which is uh, creating what we call a knowledge pack, uh, which is the actual embedded code uh, from the model that you chose. So again, we have the five models that uh, it provided. Uh, I choose one of these. This step here shows you what the ordinal class uh, is for uh, the classification result. For our gesture model, a one equates to the uh, letter A gesture and so forth. 
uh, I would then pick uh, my target embedded device. So, uh, so it's a matter of just simply choosing the target device that, that you wish to select from this list, <clears throat> choosing the appropriate uh, target OS for that device that's context sensitive. Very good. Whether you want binary or you want a library file, you would simply hit the download button and you know either get your uh, C source library or you'd get a, a .bin file that can be directly flashed to the device from that. So um, now on to deploying the knowledge pack. So that's obviously the next, and, and I assume one of the final steps. So we built. We yeah, built what are you doing with that boxing glove? <laughs> we built one to show different boxing uh, punch uh, maneuvers where we can detect uh, real time what's going on with the device. Uh, so uh, I can, with, with the Android uh, phone, we can connect what we call a uh, sensible test app mm -hmm. uh, to this device. In this case, this is the QuickLogic Chill Cat uh, that has been flashed with a knowledge pack for detecting, shows you uh, real time what the classification is for this given application. And you can map some uh, images on there that are appropriate to a particular app type. So right now it's saying it's idle. Over here, and we'll start with a jab. So you can see here, you have the jab. Hey, <laughs> look at that. You can try a hook. There's our hook. Oh, uh, Chris, I wouldn't call that a hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vander Holyfield. <laughs> and there's my uppercut. Like you mentioned a, a little bit ago, this could have taken many months, um, you know, literally just a few months ago, this could have taken many, many months for someone to achieve. Um, and now, like you mentioned, in a couple of hours, you can actually be running binary on a target and seeing, hey, does my AI really work? Is this viable or not? Yeah, yeah, that's right. We, it's always fun to see uh, customers kind of wowed by the fact that they present you with a use case and you come back in a day or two and say, here it is working. You know, let, let's show you how it goes. <laughs> so remember, if you're watching, tell your boss, I've already done it and I did it in two hours, right? <laughs> <laughs>